الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم brothers and sisters I welcome you to our course understand Quran and Salah in this uh, lesson lesson number 15 we will study tasbihat of ruku' and sujood okay and the starting prayer thana so we start with the starting prayer after we say Allahu Akbar. This is one of the prayers. There are other prayers also. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruka. Subhanaka. Subhanaka means glorified are you. No, it's from Subhanallah. Subhanallah, Allah is glorified. And actually Subhana means free from defects. Subhanallah means Allah is free from defects. Subhanaka. O oh Allah, you are free from defects. Allahumma, O oh Allah. Allahumma, O oh Allah. Wa bihamdika. Wa is and. Bi is with. Hamdika. Your praise. And with your praise. That means you are free from defects. O oh Allah, with your praise. That means we do. We, tasbih is the negation of negatives. You know, O oh Allah, you are free from defects and you are having all positive attributes. Hamd is praising, attributing positives. O oh Allah, you are greatest, you are merciful, you are kind, you are, you are just and all positive attributes. That is hamd. And tasbih is negation of negatives. So what is tasbih? That is, O oh Allah, you don't have any defect, you don't sleep, you don't get tired and so on. Tasbih and Hamd. Generally, you know, Tasbih comes in the Quran as well as in the Tasbihat, comes before Hamd. After Tasbih comes Hamd. For example, in Ruku' we say Subhan Rabbi Lazim, then we say Samiya Allah Liman Hamida Rabbana Lakal Hamd. Because Tasbih means, Oh Allah, you're free from defects. And I want to explain it a little later and in Ruku' why it is after that. Okay. وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ وَتَعَالَ جَدُّكَ وَتَبَارَكَ Baraka means blessed. Baraka Allahu lak means may Allah bless you. Baraka means blessed. Tabaraka, he is blessed or is blessed. Ismuka, your name. Ism is name. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Ismuka, your name. Tabaraka smuka, blessed is your name. وَتَعَالَ and high is. Ta'ala, Ali means high. Ta'ala means high. Ta'ala, high is. Jadduka, your majesty. Wa tabaraka smuka, wa ta'ala jadduka. Blessed is your name and high is your majesty. You see, blessed is your name means if we repeat the name of Allah, 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 definitely it will give you blessings, it will give you power because it, power ultimately is in the hands of Allah, energy is in the hands of Allah. Ismuka, like. Uh, you know, Fatima radiallahu anha was asked to recite 33 times, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and 34 times Allah will be forced sleep. And that indeed gives strength after days of hard work. Tabarak asmuka, many blessings with Allah's name. You know, and those who take Allah's name will be blessed eternally in the hereafter. Ta'ala jadduka, and high is your majesty. That means no one, no one has any honor, any majesty, any magnificence, any greatness in front of you. وَتَعَالَى جَدُّكَ So as we are saying, our mind should be filled with honor and respect and awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُكَ And there is no God except you. وَلَا إِلَهَ wa and لَا no إِلَهَ God غَيْرُكَ غَيْر means other than ka you, other than you. There is no God other than you. We are repeating this to restate our commitment to Tawheed because with shirk there is no salvation. Shirk is absolutely dangerous thing. So we are saying wala ilaha ghayruka. That is part of uh, Thana, the starting prayer. Okay? And the words are all familiar to you, then there's nothing new there, in fact, uh, or not, no, not many new words. When we go in Ruku', we say Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana again means glory be to. Subhana Rabbi meaning my Rabb is free from defects. 
Remember, there are four things in Ruku'. There are four things in Ruku'. We, have, we say Subhana, that means, Oh Allah, you are free from defects. And Rabbi, you are not saying Allah, Rabb, acknowledging what is Rabb. Rabb who is taking care of us and helps us grow. If I have trillion cells, he is taking care of each cell and he is feeding me oxygen every second, not only food three times or more. So he is Rabb and he is taking care of all our needs. He is Rabb. And third thing is Rabbi, my Rabb. You know, when you, when, you, when you want to show closeness to someone, for example, to your son or daughter, you say, my son, you know, even if it's sitting in front of you, you say, my son, you know, he's wonderful. That shows closeness, that shows love. So you're saying, Rabbi, so my Rabb, that is the third thing. You say Rabb, and you say my Rabb. And Al-Azim, Al-Azim means magnificent, great. You see, great is, Akbar is great. But in Azim, uh, there is strength there. What, what is the meaning of that? You know, bone, Azim in Arabic is, uh, means bone. Bone has strength. Azim means he is great plus strong. Nobody can you know, overpower him. Nobody can force him to do anything. He is great. So as we go down, we bow, we accept his Azamah. So my Rabb is not weak. Subhana means he's not weak. He's not afraid of anyone. He's not careless. He's not an oppressor. He doesn't do things without any purpose. And he doesn't get tired or sleep. So all kinds of you know, negatives are not there in Rabb. Rabbi, my Rabb, who takes care of me. And Al-Azim, magnificent. You see, remember these aspects as you do Ruku. Can you translate once, Subhana, Rabbi, Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, MashaAllah, Glory be to my Lord, the Magnificent. Sami Allah liman hamida. As we get up, we say Sami Allah. Sami means listened, heard. Okay, Sami Allah, Allah listened. Liman, li means for, man means who. For the one who, to the one who, okay, to the one who, Hamida who, Hamida means he praised or praised, who him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hamida who praised him, Sami Allahu liman Hamida, Allah has listened to the one who praised him, what's the meaning of that, you see Allah listens to everyone, Allah listens to everyone, of course he listens, but here means, uh, a special attention for the one who praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, he does not need our praise, our hamd. It does not benefit him at all. If we praise him, it is purely for our benefit. We get rewards for that. And in fact, we get special attention. So, can you translate once? Sami Allah. Liman. Hamidahu. Sami Allah. Allah has listened, liman, hamidahu, sami Allahu liman hamidah, Allah has listened to the one who praised him, praised him. Rabbana walakal hamd, in response as we stand up, we say, Rabbana, our Rabb, again, you know, the feeling of closeness, the expression of love, Rabbana, our Rabb, walakal hamd, and to you, to you, alhamd, all the praise, all hamd, hamd has two meanings, all praises and also thanks. Rabbana wa alhamd. So as we say it, we say it with feelings from the heart. You know, you don't praise someone like, you know, man, you are a very good person, you did a very good job and I think we are very impressed. Do you say like this? Rabbana wa alhamd, Rabbana you don't pray like this. Say it, oh, you did a wonderful job. That's how you praise your, your friends or your colleagues. So we say, we are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Rabbana alaikum. Say it from your heart. With a sense of praise, or with a sense of thanks, it should come out with, I mean, come from the heart. Rabbana alaikum. By the way, you start your salah and say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You start your qiyam with that after Allahu Akbar. And you end your qiyam. You go to the court, you end your qiyam, Rabbana alaikum. And then you go in the sujood, you sit down or you prostrate and so on. So it starts with hamd and ends, the qiyam ends with hamd and praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. The same word, Subhana, glory be to Rabbi, my Rabb, al-A'la, the highest. You learned that Kabir is big. Akbar is bigger. Al-Akbar, the biggest. Sagir, small. Asghar, smaller. Al-Asghar, the smallest. Ali is high. A'la is higher. Al-A'la, the highest. So we are in the sujood. We are putting our head down on the ground and saying, Oh Allah, you are the highest. And that is the true position of a slave, all of us. And that's why we are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are in the sujood. And in that position we are saying, Oh Allah, you are free from all defects. You don't need any partner. You are not weak. You, can, you, can, you listen to everyone directly. You help everyone directly. And so on. By the way, Subhana Rabbi has a lot of implications. And I told you in the beginning. Uh, and I just want to share one side of it, which is the side of success. The side of success. Positive, you know, a lot of research has been done, and they said positive attitude plays the you know, biggest role in success of a person in this world. And Subhana Rabbi has, is, is the dhikr that is repeated by Muslim most of the time. You know, three times in ruku, three times in sujood, next, three times in next sajda, nine times every rakah. If he prays 25 rakahs, it is more than 200 times. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to repeat so many times? Because he wants to develop some qualities in us. He wants us to develop those qualities. And other than, you know, the shirk aspect, which we can talk about sometime later, I just want to focus here on the positive attitude. For example, if the weather is bad, quote unquote, astaghfirullah bad, if weather is very hot, somebody said, what a bad weather. Who designed the weather? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Couldn't he design a better one? Of course he could. Why did he design like that? As a test. So a person who has positive attitude, he will say, Oh Allah, you have designed a perfect weather. You are free from defects. You are free from defects. So just help me do what I want to do today without any problems. This is positive attitude. Subhana Rabbi. My Rabb is free from defects. You don't have any complaint to any of the part of Qadr. Your skin, your nose, your height, your nationality, whatever. You just say my Rabb is the perfect. And you say it while bowing down and prostrating. Showing ultimate submission. This is just one aspect of Subhana Rabbi. We can dis discuss a lot many aspects, but inshallah some other time. Subhana Rabbi just removes the shirk uh, completely. With that, we take a break here. Inshallah, we'll be back after the break with grammar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. After the break, welcome for the 15th lesson in which we'll do some more grammar exercises. Please note that we will be doing this using TPI, Total Physical Interaction. That is, you are hearing it, seeing it, thinking it, and uh, you know. So you show it as you say it. Okay. Use your hands and do it. All of these, do all of these with love and enthusiasm, because in the next ten minutes, what we will be doing will be occurring in the Quran hundreds of times. So let us do it with love and commitment. I have been telling you that there are four styles of fa'ala, four abwab, that's what they are called, four patterns. First pattern is fataha yaftahu. And the second is nasara yansuru. Third one is daraba yadribu, and that's what we will be practicing today. And the differences are only in sounds like a and u and e. There is not much difference, it is very simple. And inshallah, as you keep practicing, you will know and get used to it. So let us start with Dharaba, the third pattern, frequently occurring pattern. And this is uh, where we have E sound in Udara, Yadribu. And this E sound will carry on Yadribu, Yadribu, Tadribu, Tadribu, Adribu, Nadribu, Idrib, Idribu, La Tadrib, La Tadribu. Up to here only. The rest is the same. So please. Translate after me. Okay, take a deep breath and translate after me. Daraba he hit. Darabu they hit. Darabta you hit. Darabtum you all hit. Darabtu I hit. Darabna we hit. 
يضربوا هي هيتس يضربون دي هيت تضربوا يو هيت تضربون يو اول هيت اضربوا اي هيت نضرب وي هيت اضرب هيت اضربوا هيت لا تضرب دونت هيت لا تضربوا دونت هيت ضارب the one who hits مضروب the one who is hit and ضرب is to hit okay after me by the way ضربا هو ضربا هي ضربت she hit and هو يضرب هي تضرب she hits please note that uh, the meaning of ضربا is hit and when it comes with other words like ضربا مثلا then it means to give example ضرب في الأرض means to walk in the earth and so on. So let us uh, practice only in Arabic. Okay, please repeat after me. ضرب ضربوا ضربتا ضربتم ضربتو ضربنا يضربو يضربونا تضربو تضربونا أضربو نضربو اضرب اضربو لا تضرب لا تضرب ضارب مضروب ضرب هو ضرب هي ضربت هو يضرب هي تضرب again let us do once more because this is the third frequently occurring pattern so ضرب ضربوا ضربتا ضربتم ضربتو ضربنا يضرب يضربونا تضرب تضربونا اضرب نضرب اضرب اضرب لا تضرب لا تضرب ضارب مضروب ضرب هو ضرب هي ضربت هو يضرب هي تضرب ما شاء الله the same pattern is there for next word ظلمه ظلمه is to wrong to oppress okay and ظلمه comes in the Quran in different you know forms 266 times so very precious word so we'll do that ظلمه is to do ظلم to do wrong to oppress someone so ظلمه is to wrong ظلمه they wrong he wronged they wronged you wronged you all wronged I wronged we wronged and he wrongs they wrong or they do they oppress they all oppress so you know the meaning so I will not be uh, repeating those meanings just repeat after me in Arabic okay so start Valama Valamu Valamta Valamtum Valamtu Valamna Yavulimu Yavulimuna Tavulimu Tavulimuna Avulimu Navulimu Evulim Evulimu لا تظلم لا تظلم ظالم مظلوم ظل هو ظلم هي ظلمت she wronged هو يظلم هي تظلم she wronged okay let's do it once more ظلم ظلم ظلمت ظلمتم ظلمت ظلمنا يظلم يظلمون تظلم تظلمون أظلم نظلم إظلم إظلم لا تظلم لا تظلم ظالم مظلوم ظلم هو ظلم هي ظلمت هو يظلم هي تظلم the same pattern is there for sabara also sabara means he was patient they were patient, you were patient, you all were patient, I was patient, we were patient, he is patient, or he is expressing patience, and they, and you, and you all, and be patient, isbir, and so on. And it comes in the Quran in different forms 53 times, so let us do that practice now. Please repeat after me with attention and focus. Sabara sabaru, sabarta sabartum, sabartu sabarna, yasbiru yasbiruna, tasbiru tasbiruna, asbiru nasbiru, isbir isbiru, la tasbir la tasbiru, sabir, now you see 
someone is patient no one is affected okay you are patient no one is affected so there is no form there is no masbur here so this is dash and this is what is called transitive and intransitive verbs you know those who have object or lazim and muta'addi but don't worry even if you make masbur it will not occur in the quran so sabir is one who is patient this is dash and this is sabr to be patient or patience and huwa sabara hiya sabarat huwa yasbiru hiya tasbiru she is patient okay now let us do one more word which is ghafara ghafara means to forgive to pardon okay so he pardoned he forgave they forgave you forgave you all forgive i forgive we forgive he forgives they forgive you forgive and so on you know so we'll just do the arabic forms you can do it with practice with your friends or in your class inshallah more times just repeat it and it's very simple so please repeat after me in arabic ghafara ghafaru ghafarta ghafartum ghafartu ghafarna yaghfiru yaghfiruna taghfiru taghfiruna aghfiru naghfiru اغفر اغفروا لا تغفر لا تغفروا غافر مغفور مغفرة هو غفر هي غفرت هو يغفر هي تغفر she forgives ما شاء الله we have learned four four verbs which come on the third pattern which is ضرب باب ضرب what are those verbs ضرب ظلم صبر and غفر in fact you can you know you can imagine a sequence between them if you hit someone ضرب wrongly then you have oppressed ظلم the one who is hit if he cannot do anything let him be patient صبر and the one who has hit should ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him غفر so ضرب then ظلم صبر غفر just to remember uh, in fact there are many more words which come on this pattern let's come to a learning tip okay in learning tip we are talking of gift of hearing of allah that is given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact uh, quran mentions hearing before seeing and in fact hearing is a huge blessing because you can find many blind scholars but not a single deaf one why because he cannot even know what sound represents so you see the the blessing of hearing is a huge blessing so use that blessing in good things if you have the habit of hearing songs all the time you know there is danger that while dying you may sing while dying instead of saying la ilaha illallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the one whose last words are la ilaha illallah he will enter jannah aw kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam so to do that it's not a matter of knowing that it is a matter of practicing it so i give you an example of a girl who was dying a muslim girl who was dying in a hospital she met with an accident and she was crushed you know and then she was brought to hospital of course when the accident is there family members are not expected to be around so the doctor was uh, when he saw that the girl is dying a young girl so he came uh, close to the girl and started saying la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah and the girl won't say it and after a while she started murmuring something so the doctor thought maybe she is telling something very important he brought close his i mean he brought his ears close to her mouth to hear what she is saying and she was singing a song and that's how she died may allah forgive her forgive us and give us tawfiq to say la ilaha illallah when we die that that and, and there is another example of sheikh abdul karim parekh of very you know he was a very big scholar of quran and mashallah he did a lot of service uh, in spreading the message of the quran when he died before his death he recited the last verses of surah al hashr and he died mashallah the whole life uh, uh, he spent the whole life spreading tawhid and spreading the message of the quran and allah gave him taw- gave him tawfiq to recite these verses So what we are saying is keep listening to Quran as much as possible and that's why we have mp3 recording of our whole short course in fact all the sessions also will be available inshallah on mp3 just try to listen not only this the whole short course is condensed in 1 hour just word for word meanings of the Quran keep listening to them keep listening to them you know alhamdu all praise lillahi be to allah rab 
the Lord Al Alameen of the worlds. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So you can keep on going, listen to these again and again, and inshallah within one or two weeks you will know the complete short course. What an easy way in these times to learn the Quran. Subhanallah. So to summarize, we have seven homeworks, two on recitation, five minutes from Mus'haf, you know, recite at least five minutes from the Mus'haf and five minutes from memory, two on study, not on memory, two on study, study from the book, take your pen and write something, you know, practice, alladhi allama bil qalam, you have to use the pen inshallah and you will learn a lot and keep that vocabulary sheet with you and listen to this mp3 recording, we'll talk about the rest later on. With that, we have come to the end of 15th lesson, and alhamdulillah, we have learned 78 words which occur in the Quran 31,388 times. Inshallah, we'll continue. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.